tolerance. And this was around a long time ago and it got kind of tabled, but now it's come back again and it's been studied more and actually been working a lot more. And, and it, it works pretty much on the same principle as sub-Q. Um, it induces antigen tolerance with the same immunological mechanism. It's very safe. It works in adults and children. Um, and so, but the studies have just shown some efficacy and some limited pollens, not every pollen. You know, grasses, birch, dust mites, and a few others. Um, and, and it's expanding. And you can't treat with every antigen the patient with skin test positive to. So even though there is some cross-reactivity between tree species, grass species, you don't know if you're going to really cover everything. There are some side effects with the oral tablets. Patients can get GI distress. Um, and with the oral tablets, you have to use a lot of the antigen. Um, then they changed it to sublingual drops, where you use less of the antigen. But then you can have local swelling and itching and stuff like that. Um, so it's still a work in progress. Uh, since it's not FDA approved, there's no standardized protocols or practice parameters out there, but there's a lot of data, and doctors and allergists have put together very nice protocols on how to do this, and are using it very successfully in some patients, so it's definitely the wave of the future. Um, another thing that um, oral immunotherapy has shown is that it decreases eosinophilic cation protein and then decreases serum eosinophils. And instead of the skin mast cells, it uses the oral Langerhans cells for its um, use. Um, and uh, in the future, um, oh, and it also does help, I'm sorry, it does help with asthma as well as allergic, as, as well as atopic dermatitis, but not as well as sub-Q. Now, does sub-Q work better than sublingals? You know, that debate is still going on. You know, there's still more data that needs to be done, more studies need to be done. It's all over the board, but it's definitely way of the future. It's easy, the patients can do it at home, it's convenient, and it's more cost-effective, so I'm sure they're going to perfect it, make it better, and better and better. Adjuvant usage. There are the, there are just the allergy meetings in Orlando last week. They had a lot of great data out on um, food oral tolerance for eggs, as well as peanuts and hazelnuts. Um, so that's really um, very uh, hopeful. And then there's other uh, routes of administration that people are working on: intranasal, intrabronchial. But again, those routes do not produce the systemic immunological changes, but they can decrease eosinophils, ICAM-1, and neutrophils. Lastly, Zobar, the, the anti-IgG antibody. It's been around for a while, primarily uh, for asthma. But, you know, that's where it's FDA approved. It is another way to treat I think allergic conditions, and again, there's some really exciting data out of the um, allergy meetings in Orlando where a combination of Zolair plus immunotherapy uh, really help together better than either alone in decreasing allergic rhinitis, asthma, etc. But you have to get, uh, it's, it's, that would be off, it's not approved yet, and to get Zolair for even asthma is a pain. So um, that's again a way in the future. Thank you for listening from Deacon in Dallas and all of us from Appleton Allergy.